In this video, we're going to look at getting the basics right. So we all play snooker slightly differently, we all stand a little bit differently, and we've all got slightly different habits, but there are certain fundamental things that we should all be doing on each shot. So if you watch good players or the professional players on TV, they've all got certain aspects of their technique that they all do pretty much the same. So we're gonna to cover today in a little bit of detail some of the basics that you should try to do on every single shot when you're playing. So first of all, we're gonna form a nice solid bridge for the cue to run along. Now this is important because we don't want the bridge to be unstable and we don't want it moving around on the shot. We want a nice solid V for the cue to run along and stay nice and still for each shot that we play. So we do this by putting the hand flat on the table and spreading the fingers apart as far apart as you can get them. Then keeping your fingers straight and keeping the palm of the hand on the table, just raise your knuckles up towards the ceiling a little bit and then bring your thumb in to touch your first finger and that then forms the V for the cue to run along. So that's a nice solid base now for our cue to run along that's not gonna be moving when we play in shots. Now one little point on this is I see people, they say, um, why do professional players tap their middle finger when they're playing shots? Um, and there's actually not a lot to that. It's a little bit of a feel thing and it just gives players a bit of timing and a bit of feel on each shot. And a lot of players don't probably even know they're doing that on shots. So it's nothing more than that. It's nothing more than a little bit of feel for players. Um, but the important parts are that we're forming a nice solid base. So now let's look at the bridge length and the distance you should be queuing up away from the white ball. Now the next thing to get right is your bridge length. And this is the distance from the V of your bridge hand to the cue ball. And this should be anywhere from nine inches to about 13 inches. And you don't want it too long and you don't want it any shorter than those measurements. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of reasons why now. So if I get down on this shot and I've got a bridge length that's way too long, it's over 13 inches, you can just see that because we've got a lot of cue sticking out here, there's lots of movement on the cue because the pivot point is really far back. So the cue can waggle around quite a bit and it's very difficult to get the cue to come through and hit a precise point on the white ball. So that's the problem with the bridge length when it's too long. If I just get back up now, and if I get back down on the shot and I have a bridge length that's too short, the problem here is, is that on power shots and when we need to use more power, we haven't got any room to pull the cue back to do a full backswing and then a full delivery. So obviously you can see here, I'm restricted and I can't come back very far at all. So if I get back up again now, and then I get back down on the shot and use a proper bridge length, what you can see now is I've got a nice distance between my V of my bridge hand and the cue ball. And then I'm able to, when I need it, on a power shot or on medium power shots, I can pull the cue back all the way to my V and do a full cue action and then deliver the cue and pop the ball. So that's why getting your bridge length um, at a reasonable distance like this is really important if you want to improve your game. Now let's have a look at the grip and this is a really important part of your technique because this is the hand that's going to be delivering the cue on each shot that we play. So it's really important that we get this part of your technique right. So if, we, if you just put the cue down on the table like that and then you pick the cue up just like you would a hammer uh, and then just wrap your fingers around the cue, it's really no more complicated than that to actually just form the basic grip. Now in terms of tightness when you're gripping the cue, out of 10, I would say most players' grips are around a four or a five. And to give you some idea, if I hold my cue with my normal grip and then I use my other hand, I'm able to just push the cue backwards and forwards in my hand. So that just gives you an idea of the amount of tension that I've got on my grip hand there. Now let's have a look at some more important points about the grip and how it should function when we're actually playing shots. And then a really important point with the grip is that when we're feathering and we're doing our final backswing and then playing the shot, we like to try and keep our cue as flat to the bed of the table as we can. So instead of keeping a full closed grip as we do our pullback and then lifting the cue up in the air, what we try and do is just let the back fingers just relax off the cue and let the cue just push those fingers out the way when you're doing your backswing, just so that the cue can stay nice and flat to the bed of the table. And then when you do your final backswing, let them relax and then go forward and play the shot. 
And then one more thing that's vitally important with the grip is that we don't introduce any extra tension on our grip hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to grip the cue about a 4 or a 5 out of 10 power, like we discussed. And then we're going to feather up as normal. We're going to bring the cue back. We're going to let the cue push those fingers out the way on the long backswing. And then we're going to do our delivery all the way to the chest. And when we've completed the shot, we shouldn't have added any extra tension to our grip. So there should still be a 4 or a 5 out of 10 power on your grip hand. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow these forearm muscles to remain nice and relaxed. And that's going to allow us to control the cue properly. So I'm going to have a look at this long range blue uh, and keep my grip nice and relaxed. So I'm going to stand behind the shot, walk into the shot, keep my grip nice and relaxed. So just to recap the grip then, we're going to pick the cue up as we said. We're going to have a grip that's about a 4 or a 5 out of 10 in strength. We don't want to strangle the cue, we just want to control the cue nicely without too much tension. On the backswing, we're going to let the cue just push our fingers out the way so that that allows the cue to stay nice and flat to the table as we pull it back. And then when we deliver the cue, and we finish our delivery, it's vitally important that we don't add any extra tension to our grip. We just want to keep our grip nice and loose, just like we started, and keep it nice and controlled all the way through the delivery. And then finally, what I want to talk about in this video is pauses in your cue action. So whether you pause at the white ball, or whether you do your backswing, and then you pause and play the shot, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things I like to tell people to do that I seem to find most beneficial for players. So what we want to do is get really good at controlling this cue and having a nice smooth cue action when we play and a nice consistent delivery each time. So if I just show you a common problem that I see, you see players go to play a ball and they'll feather up and then their final backswing delivery is very quick. So they'll hit the ball very fast. So what I like to teach people is to slow down their final backswing. So I think if you do your feathers up to the white, have a little pause at the white ball, and then just keep the backswing nice and controlled, you seem to have a much more controlled forward delivery then. So instead of coming back and having a big deliberate pause at the back, if you just control your backswing so it's nice and smooth, then I think the delivery will just take care of itself without having to deliberately implement a new pause into your cue action. So if we just look at one of those now, and I have a nice smooth backswing, so feather up to the white, little pause at the white, smooth backswing and delivery. And then it just looks like we've got much more control over the cue when you're playing like that. So we just do one more of those. Feather up to the white, do your little checks, feather up. And that way, I just think you've got a lot more control over the cue. Now, if you've already got a pause at the end of your backswing before you deliver, and that's working for you, then that's absolutely fine. Carry on doing it that way. It works absolutely fine for Sean Murphy. But if you haven't already got a pause that you're doing naturally, I think it's much easier to control your final backswing and then just let the delivery take care of itself. With a controlled backswing, you'll have a controlled delivery. So in this video, we've covered some of the basics that are really important to get right. So we know about gripping the cue and to not introduce any extra tension to our grip when we actually play the shot. We know about the bridge lengths and why it's important that you don't have one that's too long or too short. And we know about just slowing down that final backswing so that we remain nice and in control of this cue and our delivery is nice and smooth. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also, if you want to see more instructional videos exactly like this one, then subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be uploading at least one new video per week. Thanks for watching. Cheers.